Well, hello, and a very warm welcome back to one of my winter strolls. We're out and about, it's freezing cold. It's Friday, so happy Friday, boys and girls. And we're out, we're here, we're ready for another video on the Ford Over It and Over It channel. I'm out for a walk, which can only mean we're discussing all things Pompey, which indeed we are today. We've got a lot to discuss, so we're going to get straight into it. We're going to get the boring stuff out of the way first. It's been a round of testing for the EFL for COVID, um, and the results were announced just a couple of hours ago, actually, at the time we're recording that. There are no positive COVID cases in Camp Pompey. We are completely clear of this horrendous virus, which is one of the best pieces of news we've had for a long time because after you know a couple of weeks of we were really kind of on and off with it but like, i think it was six confirmed positive cases i know aston villa are struggling with it at the minute and shrewsbury have had to call off their game against our neighbors down the road because of it this weekend yeah no there, there was there was all sorts of, there's, there's been all sorts of trouble with in terms of covid across the efl across the premier league um, and we're really lucky to be a club that is completely rid of it which is brilliant news um and hopefully i mean brilliant news for all pompey fans out there and hopefully we can really kick on now yeah as i say now we can kick on we can look forward and think right let's get down to business let's get january underway and let's get a good win under our belt which brings me nicely on to my next talking point which is of course i don't know if you can see my breath it is freezing like i'm talking minus two minus three right now cold again we're getting strange looks but we're, we're just rolling with it i've, I've got um, as you can probably tell by my surroundings i've gone a slightly different route <laughs> to the last video so hopefully this is going to be quite slightly quiet um, so that's good but yeah the next thing I want to talk about is our trip on Sunday to Bristol City to Ashton Gate to the West Country it's not too far um, for us from from Fratton Park and it's a big game I mean it's third round of the FA Cup uh, the first round in which Premier League teams and Championship teams were involved obviously Pompey have had to play a couple of games to get to this point and what a couple of games it has been I mean probably one of the best goals that we've scored in quite a while from Tom Naylor actually for the um, the game is game again <laughs> The game against Kings Lynn, um, and then also a really hard-fought win against um, against our fellow promotion rivals Ipswich Town in League One this season. So I know the, the term promotion rivals might be a little bit contentious, but we'll we'll move on from that. So that's something to look forward to. I think we'll get a result out of that one. I wouldn't be surprised, to be honest with you, if it goes to penalties, because um, it, it feels like it's going to be one of those games that's going to be really tight. Um, both teams hopefully be able to go for it. Pompey will be able to name a fully well. Pompey can name a fully fit squad. Kenny Jacket has got absolutely everyone at his disposal so hopefully that's got the hallmarks for a really good game and I'm very much looking forward to watching it. Now on to business, the January transfer window. We've got a little bit of news to discuss. So we start with the news that Rico Hackett Fairchild has left the club. He's off chasing new adventures at Southend United now. Um, so very best of luck to him. We didn't really get to see much of him at Pompey so yeah hopefully he can go on to do really really big things and look forward to hearing a lot more about him. Obviously not in a Pompey shirt but still hearing a lot more about him in the future. He's gonna he's gonna be big. The next good news it is a January Geordie. Geordie Hawula has extended his contract with Pompey until the end of the season, which is fantastic news. Obviously, the, the man himself all the way from Coventry City and, again, another player that hasn't really got to show him what he's made of. I managed to watch him in a couple of Papa John's Trophies games this season. I think he's played a couple of minutes in the FA Cup for us as well. And he's looked solid, like he's looked on the money. And hopefully, he will get a chance to shine um, in the first team in League One. In, in Hopefully, I get to see him on Sunday. Sunday against Bristol City. Hopefully he's a talent that we can get used to seeing on the pitch at Fratton Park and, and at games that Pompey are playing at because he is a, a really solid player and hopefully he can get his minutes up, get into the first team, get in, get some League One minutes under his belt as well as um, obviously he's a, he's a great guy to use for, for FA Cup games. So hopefully we get to see him on Sunday against Bristol City as well. Now the next question is will Geordie Hiwula be the best business we do this transfer window? Well my answer to that question is probably not. When asked directly about a certain 23 year old who's currently playing his football at Birmingham City after he came back from AFC Wimbledon, Mr. Steve Seddon, we all know Mr. Steve Seddon, everyone's favourite Steve. Well, there are quite a few Steves, aren't there? Well, St Steve Stone's up there, isn't he? But you know, well, Steve Seddon could be on his way back to Fratton Park. When asked directly a couple of days ago, our very good friend, Mr. Mark Catlin, uh, Pompey CEO, said that he wouldn't rule out the possibility of a Fratton Park reunion for Steve Seddon. Now, 
it has come to light in the last couple of hours. Kenny Jacket has confirmed that Steve Seddon is on a very small list of Pompey targets um, in the left back position for this transfer window, which is exciting because, you know, with the return to Cameron Pring to Bristol City, I think that does leave a void. If I'm honest, it does leave a void. Um, I was a little bit disappointed when I heard the news because I think Cameron Pring, is, he's almost been an unsung hero for us this season. He's, he's been really, really good. We were lucky enough to be at the Fleet. We were lucky enough to be at the Fleetwood game and we were literally sat at the back of the lower tier in the north stand and we had a brilliant kind of view of what Cameron Pring was doing, how he was operating, what, what he was doing on the pitch. Ollie turned to me, my brother, and said, look, he's, he's a big lad, like he's, he's got a lot of attributes for League One football. He's also a very talented footballer. Um, so Bristol City, you know, they're lucky to have him back because he was doing really well for us. And as I say, that has left a little bit of a hole in the team. I'm a massively Brown fan, don't get me wrong. I think he's quality and I think the bloke in terms of kind of, in terms of a character in the dressing room, Lee Brown is literally 10 out of 10. He's perfect, he's the funniest guy. And he's also got that experience in order to help some of the younger players in the squad when they might be struggling with a couple of results, etc. Lee Brown's been there, bought the t-shirt with a number of things, especially at this, this level of English football. So he's great to have around. However, it, we are now contesting for championship football and I think I think a man like Steve Seddon would be perfect to bring back in to the Pompey setup and I would really, really love to see that deal organised and hopefully, hopefully, please Pompey, get Steve Seddon back at Fratton Park because that could mean, you know, even bigger things are coming for us in 2021. Right, I do apologise, road noise is going to become a little bit of a problem for the last little bit of this video but the final thing i want to chat about is our boy rasmus rasmus nicolaisen has also extended his contract he's sticking around at pompey until at least the end of the season now that is also brilliant news and you know th there's three three situations obviously steve said it's not quite over the line yet but three three players where you know, it's only positive stuff. And, you know, with Jordi Hawula sticking around, Rasmus Nicolaisen has been solid. He's filled in for Jack when he's nearly two. He's stepped up to the plate. And hopefully, I know I speak for a number of Pompey fans when I say this, and many of my friends and family feel the same way, but I would actually love to see Rasmus Nicolaisen and Jack Watmore playing together as a partnership. I think it would really, really work. You know, nothing against Sean Raggett, because I think especially just on the run up to Christmas, he had an absolutely brilliant run of games. And long may that continue for him, because I think he He's a real asset to the football club. However, I would like to see a bit of Rasmus and Jack. I think that partnership at the back would just work sublimely. I think it would be brilliant. I realise I just used the word sublime. I don't think I've ever used that word before, but there we go. Yes, yeah, a big time supports the football club. Great time to be a Pompey fan. And I've said that a lot recently, so there we go. Funny, funny old world, isn't it? But yeah, many thanks for joining us for this one, boys and girls. That is where I'm going to wrap it up and leave you. I will see you on Sunday, quarter past one. Coverage will begin at 1.15 for Bristol City versus Pompey in the third round of the FA Cup. That is one to getting your diaries and really look forward to. So I'm really looking forward to bringing you that one. Until then, we've also got a big January coming up as well. Lots of streams coming your way, lots of content as well. So get subscribing now so you don't miss a moment of it. For now, keep the faith, look after yourselves, check up on your friends and family, see if they're doing all well during this lockdown as well. And it goes without saying by now, play out Pompey.